It's Friday, October 16th, 2015. That means you made it to the end of the week, and this is What Did I Miss? The show that finds everything that's interesting on the internet so you don't have to. If you like the show and want to show your support, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share the video with all of your friends. And if you have anything to add or want to join the conversation, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's do this. This first story just goes to show how easy it is for people to lie about who they are and what they do. A self-proclaimed terror expert analyst for Fox News has been arrested for lying about his CIA credentials. Wayne Simmons has been a frequent guest on Fox News, portraying himself as a outside paramilitary special operations officer from 1973 to 2000. Based on these credentials, he's analyzed several terrorist threats on U.S. soil and even tried to obtain security clearance to work as a defense contractor. The indictment includes falsifying national security forms in relation to his work with the CIA. Unrelated to these charges, Simmons is also under investigation for a real estate scam to the tune of 125 $5,000. The CIA is working closely with the Justice Department to pursue this indictment. It amazes me that within the 13 years that he was claiming to be something that he was not, no one bothered to check into his background. They just took his word for it. So technically, I could profess myself as an expert on climate change, go on Fox News and then profess that making spaghetti is probably the most detrimental thing that you can do for the environment, then everyone stops making spaghetti because I'm an expert. And going by Fox's history, no one will catch on for another 13 years. In Science is Creepy Sometimes News, a research team at the University of California, Berkeley, found a way to control whether or not mice dream. The team placed a switch on the medulla of several mice, which controlled whether or not the mice went into REM sleep, which is the stage of sleep that is most closely related to having dreams. The neuroscientists used laser lights to inactivate the neurons in the mice, which effectively eliminated their ability to go into REM sleep. The research will help us understand why and how we sleep, and more importantly, why we dream. Some neurological diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's are correlated with changes in REM sleep, so it stands to reason that it may be related to changes in mental and emotional health. Upon hearing this research, two things come to mind. How close are we to dream sharing like in the movie Inception, and how awesome would this research have been for the kids in the Nightmare on Elm Street series? Freddy would have been screwed. In a unique way to solve economic problems, Australia is looking into changing the name of its current currency. Currently, Australian currency is known as the Australian dollar, but they're taking advice from American television, specifically The Simpsons. An online petition has gained over 5,000 signatures requesting that the country change the name of its currency to Dollary Dues, a reference to an episode of The Simpsons that aired in 1995. The reason that the petition is even being considered is that the value of the Australian dollar has dipped along with the price of exports and economic growth in the country that gives us Vegemite and kangaroos. The belief is that the name change will entice foreign countries like the United States to purchase the currency simply because of the name, eventually causing a bounce back in the value. What can I say? When all else fails, follow the Simpsons. I mean, they also predicted that Donald Trump was going to run for the U.S. presidency. If it sounds ridiculous and it's probably working, then you can guarantee that the Simpsons did it first. More research has gone into the claim that the average person needs eight hours of sleep to live a healthy life. By studying modern-day hunter-gatherer tribes, researchers have found that not even our ancestors were getting the doctor-recommended eight hours of sleep per night. The research team traveled to the last hunter-gatherer tribes that were left in the world to study their sleep patterns as the tribes do not have the same distractions of technology that we do. The previous belief was that tribes like this, as well as our ancestors, slept with the rising and setting of the sun. But the research over the course of three years found that the average tribe person would sleep a mere 6.5 hours per night, which is comparable to people in developed societies, which equals out to a sleep efficiency of 81 to 86 percent. They also found that these tribes didn't take very many naps during the day, and they also didn't fall asleep as soon as the sun set. This calls into question the millions of dollars that are funneled into research projects on how technology has limited the average person's ability to get a full night's rest. Especially given that insomnia seems to run rampant in the modern world, yet these tribes don't even have a word in their language that describes it. It also should be noted that these tribes are much healthier. Not a single one is obese, they have lower blood pressure, and better heart conditions. It may stand to reason that a lack of sleep is not contributing to your overall health. 
The Stratford Police Department in Connecticut may be hiring a new sketch artist, but unfortunately they'll have to wait about seven years. An 11-year-old girl drew a stick figure representation of a criminal involved with a series of burglaries in the area. Rebecca DiPietro didn't think that her sketch would amount to much, assuming that police would dismiss it and simply throw the sketch away. But officers matched the sketch to pictures of Pedro Bruno, who confessed to multiple burglaries, including the one in DiPietro's home. And Rebecca gave all the credit to her art teacher. Police stated that if it wasn't for her drawing, they may never have found the suspect or recovered some of the items that he had stolen. And schools want to cut art and music programs. And that's all I have for today. If you'd like to learn more about anything I talked about today, please be sure to check out the links in the description below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and share the video with all of your friends. And as always, I'll see you next time when you ask yourself, what did I miss?